Where are the wheels? These are the wheels. They're between us. What do I do with my hands? <laughs> Just... Rocky Mountain Altitude between two wheels. The new Rocky Mountain Altitude. Welcome to the launch of our new Altitude. Best one yet. This is Remy's race bike for 2024. This is the first Altitude, 1991. In 91, it was our flagship race bike for cross country. The first Altitude I had was 27.5 and it was quite light. I think the, f the biggest dropper post you could fit in it was a 125 and I have no idea how we raced the, a 125 dropper post. And then I guess after that, it would have we would have gone to Slayer for a brief moment, but then back to the altitude when it got a redesign. Yep. Still 27.5. And then we went to Instinct for a brief period of time, but it was really, it was the Instinct BC, which was really just a an altitude. With 29 inch wheels. Exactly. I guess it was 2020. To be launched as a 2021 model year. Mm -hmm. My best memory on the altitude was probably sharing the podium in Whistler with Jesse in 2022. All my best days of riding for the past 10 years have been on the altitude. So you can't really like choose one, but that's the bike I've spent 90% of my time on and yeah, lots of good memories. Well, I mean, we're not here to talk about the first altitude. We're here to talk about the latest altitude. So um, I think we should probably show that one off. So the altitude is designed for, uh, you know, the kind of rider that aspires to ride challenging, steep technical terrain as fast as they want to. I think this bike is designed for the person that wants to ride up the mountain and then be not hindered in any way by the bike on the terrain that they choose to ride. It's for gnarly terrain. It's for going as fast as possible on that terrain. In my experience so far, it's, it's uh, accomplishing those things. Uh, we've got models that go from the A30 level, which is aluminum frame with a 12 speed Dior drivetrain, all the way up to the C99, which is our carbon frame with the highest end drivetrain and suspension spec that you can get from SRAM with their flight attendant stuff. And everything in between, Fox factory build kits with XTR, um, some XT Grupos with Performance Elite. So there's a build out there to suit a wide range of budgets. It's uh, 160 mils of travel in the rear and comes with a 170 mil fork. And that size range starts at size small and goes all the way up to extra large. The small is a 27.5 uh, wheeled uh, platform, so front and rear. So we've updated the geometry on the new bike, you know, in some areas and then kept it the same in others. Kept the reach the same. So in theory, fitment from old bike to new bike uh, should remain consistent. So the old C2 angle was 75.5 and the new C2 angle jumped up to 77.5. What that change does is it puts you in a more centered seated position on the bike um, for better climbing. With the head tube, we went to 63.5. Fairly significant change there as well. But what that translates to is a longer front center and more stable steering uh, for riding at higher speeds. The medium, large and extra large are 29er bikes. However, they do have the ability to uh, be mulleted, meaning you put a 27.5 wheel on the back. Um, and that adjustability to preserve the geometry is built into the main link. There's a flip chip there, it says 2.9er MX, and you just flip the chip and uh, you're able to maintain consistent geometry between both setups. The MX can be like a really fun and maneuverable setup. It's gonna be easier to corner. It's gonna be like man more maneuverable in the air. Another uh, piece of adjustable kit on the bike um, and one that you know Rocky Mountain riders will be familiar with is we have our Ride 4 system. So this is a change from the old bike, used to be Ride 9. Because we flipped the orientation of the ride chips, so on our old bikes, they were in the link driving the shock. And on this new bike, they're in the front triangle uh, at the forward shock mount. Positions are inverse, and we'll have a chart to demonstrate that. 
but the slackest position, which is always position one for us, is in the forward position. And then two is down low, and then three is up high, and then four, which is the steepest position, is out back. Uh, last main piece of adjustability is reach adjust headset. It allows you to adjust your reach by up to 10 millimeters. So the bikes ship in a neutral position and there's a spare set of cups in the small parts box that allow you to shorten the reach or extend the reach by five millimeters on either side. With the reach adjust cups, it's definitely like a good compromise where I can have a bike that maybe I think is a bit, little bit too big for me, but but I can bring it back with this reach adjust cup. I can put it in the short setting and all of a sudden it works great for me. We have size specific chainstay links, which is a new thing for us uh, with this bike. So we jump from 430 to 440 to 450. We've moved away from having separate uh, seat stays and chainstays. Now rear triangles are one piece and that means we've got three different rear triangle molds uh, for the altitude range. What that does for us is we're able to have a single axle position that's better compatible with uh, transmission derailers. In the beginning, we did we touched on you know design goals for the bike, and as you can see, it's got a you know very different suspension layout. We reached the end of what we uh, could achieve with our old bike, so this is what we ended up with. What we have here is a concentric to the bottom bracket mounted main link that drives the shock. And it's what we call our new LC2R system. Old Rocky Riders will recognize we used that name in the past. And it stands for uh, lower concentric counter rotating links. We want to maintain that familiar Rocky ride. Big story is we have a wider range of usable travel, still a good amount of progression. And in the active travel portion, um, you know, around the sag zone, is we have really good support. The altitude in any generation it's had has always been known for its small bump com compliance. Really grippy. This has taken that and basically added that support. So it means you're able to push with your feet more, generate more speed out of the bike, and the ability to pump this bike a lot more without sacrificing that small bump that I've always noticed in the altitude. So with our new generation of frame designs, you know, there's a lot of background work that gets done on a full redesign like this. I'd say that driving factors were we wanted a stiffer frame. We wanted lower bike center gravity. We wanted to uh, change the kinematics in certain ways. We want to improve cornering performance by like reducing the amount of tip and effort. And one way to do that is just have a lower center of gravity frame. It goes hand in hand with suspension design of the frame. So having these like short links all positioned centrally in the frame allow us to create a stiffer connection between the front and rear triangle. Right away, I noticed that this bike can corner a lot harder than the previous bike. And listening to Ken say these things, I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. But then you talk to guys like Thomas Vanderham, he always preferred a low mounted shock on his bikes because it actually helped him to uh, like whip and table better. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited to get it in the, into the bike park and uh, put that to the test. <laughs> Internal cable routing, everyone's favorite topic. Point one. The cables do not go through the headset because we know better. Say no to cable tourism. If we start at the front, so the way we design our internal cable routing is we finish off all the ports at the head tube with these covers and the covers are both like for cosmetic reasons, but the covers also preload the cables a little bit against the frame so that they're clamped and they don't rattle around. As we move down towards the frame, the storage gives us access to a cut in the internal cable routing where you can choose moto or regular uh, brake hose routing. And then as we move towards the back, we have worked on the geometry of the exit of the front triangle going into the rear triangle so that there's as little cable growth as possible. We've adjusted the C2 blanks, shorter in all sizes and we've upped the seat post spec on all sizes by one travel amount. The frame is also 200 mil direct mount, so no smaller rotors in there. And I think that 200 mil, like, it really signifies the intended use of this platform. You're meant to have big brakes on here to help you slow down from going so incredibly fast.
With this frame design, instead of magnets, we went to uh, cam actuated clasps on our penalty box cover. We want to be secure. We didn't want it to rattle. Uh, we wanted a positive fit and uh, you know, relatively high degree of uh, waterproofness. You can wash your bike with a hose, not a pressure washer, and find that the inside of your down tube will stay dry. Another cool feature with the cover is we've incorporated an air tag and or tile compartment. The, the bikes come with a sticker that tell you about this feature. You want to remove it after you've installed your tile. So in case your bike gets stolen, you don't let anyone know that there's one installed. As someone who has had their bike stolen, it's freaking sucks. And uh, now got the air tag, don't mess with me, I'll find you. <laughs> the storage compartment itself, it's quite big uh, and it's like usefully big. So uh, you can fit a ton of stuff in there. Does not fit a beer can. Would be pretty cool if it did. What about a can, a, a bottle of Thailand Red Bull? Yes, yes. That'll... Five hour energy, there we go. Five hour energy will fit. <laughs> Where's the water bottle cage, Ken? I don't know what you're talking about, dude. Um, so all the frames fit a full size bottle. So that's the 26 ounce large bottle that you typically would buy from a bike shop. I know in the large and the extra large, you can fit a second bottle in the accessory mount position and that's the 22 ounce bottle. So the bikes ship with the chain stay, seat stay and down tube protectors installed. In the small parts box, you also get two shuttle guards. You can run one or you can run two and you know, further protect your down tube from uh, you know, rocks getting kicked up by the front wheel and striking your down tube. Another thing that's part of that is we also have two fenders on the frame to prevent mud, dirt, whatever getting flung at the rear shock since it's down low and a little bit exposed down at the bottom. The frames come equipped with a new version of our Canada arm. Still has the same mounting interface that uh, uses a one-up uh, upper guide. So all the bikes come with a top mount chain guide. And then there's also two ICG bolts below the bottom bracket. If you want to run a bash guard, which I do, um, keep that chain protected. From a design side, we incorporated enough you know, features into the bike. Um, to suit like a wide range of riders for its intended use, which is that, you know, enduro style uh, type of riding, whether you're racing or not. It sits neatly in our lineup in between the Instinct and the Slayer. It's a good all-rounder when you're riding steeper, more challenging terrain. It sounds like it's for me. <laughs> uh, someone who wants to go fast, ride challenging terrain, uh, not get hindered by the bike that they're riding and uh, feel confident anywhere. Have you had any issues with keeping it a secret? <laughs> no, so uh, it's actually... Uh, I have. <laughs> you have, yeah, but that's like... My, my girlfriend didn't do, didn't do me any <laughs> solids. I will say in North Van, there is an underlying attitude of like, people are no brands operate here and they you know, people talk, but they keep it to themselves. Like there's no pictures. Like when I'm, when I'm out riding, no one's whipping their phone out, taking a picture of what I'm riding, you know, <laughs> to do that to a stranger in any situation, you know, in or outside of bikes, also pretty rude.